Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a look at how fold mountains are formed and what are they, okay? So a fold mountain to you and I looks like a regular mountain, okay? If no one told us any different, but there are certain features in it that make it a bit distinctive looking. So a fold mountain is a mountain that's actually formed because of two plates colliding. So we know that the point where two plates collide, that's called a destructive plate boundary. What happens at a destructive plate boundary? Convection currents of magma are moving in currents underneath the two plates, causing the two plates to collide and push against each other. Now you can imagine two continental plates pressing and pushing against each other over millions of years. The pressure of the two rocks and the two plates squeezing and pressing against each other, they will buckle upwards. They will any rock on that plate or above that plate will buckle and squeeze upwards. So you're basically taking, we'll say, horizontal land and you're buckling that land or that rock upwards. Now, it's a very, very slow process as the rock is buckled upwards. It takes place over millions and millions of years. That rock that's been buckled upwards is buckled up into a fold mountain, okay? So, um, it can happen where two continental plates are pressed and pushed against each other, or where an ocean plate is buckled against a continental plate. And the funny thing about fold mountains is like they started forming millions and millions of years ago, um, hundreds of millions of years ago across the earth, but they're still actually forming today. So like if you think of the likes of the Alps and the Himalayas, they're fold mountains and they are actually still being buckled and pushed upwards. It's just that we don't see it happening before our very eyes. Okay, so as long as plates are colliding across the earth, you're going to get full mountains forming. So if you look at the diagram there to your right hand side, we'll say you can tell that that rock is very unusual looking. So the rock has been squeezed. It has been buckled. It's been put under pressure. It's like we came from either side of it and squeezed the rock and buckled it. OK, so it's like a concertina now. So that rock has clearly been folded. It's been squeezed and buckled. So that's evidence. If you want to look at a mountain and want evidence, is it a full mountain or not? You look at the, like the rocks should be lovely, perfect horizontal layers, really. That rock is squeezed and buckled. That's a full mountain. The upward parts of the rock, the upfold of the rock that points upwards is called the anticline. Okay, and the dip in between each anticline is called a syncline, a syncline. Now, the Andes, you've heard of the Andes Mountains in South America. They're actually a fold mountain. Now, you can kind of see the folds in it there. You can see the, little, the different folds moving across it. It's not perfectly horizontal anymore. It's, going, it's been squeezed and buckled. They were not there except for the two plates colliding and buckling and squeezing the rock and the earth's crust upwards into a fold mountain. Look at the location of the Andes. It's running all along the west coast of South America where basically you have the Nazca plate and the Pacific plate meeting the South American plate and where they're colliding with each other, okay? So that's what's causing the Andes Fold Mountains to actually form in the first place. So you can see how high they are, how rugged they are, how squeezed they are. All those upfolds in the mountain there, they're called anticlines. Any dips in between the peaks are called the synclines. Okay, that's a great map all across the earth of the locations of the different Fold Mountains of the young ones. Okay, so you have the Rockies in North America. Again, look at the location of the Rockies, where the Pacific Plate meets the North American Plate. Look at the Andes in South America, where the Nazca Plate meets the South American Plate. Look at the Alps and the Himalayas, where you have the Eurasian Plates meeting African Plates and Indo-Australian Plates and all of that. Okay, so you have different... The four mountains all across the earth were formed at different times. Some of them are young, they've only recently been formed, and some of them are really old. So basically, since plates have been moving, they have started forming fold mountains. So some fold mountains started forming 400 million years ago, and some fold mountains have only started forming 35 million years ago. So some fold mountains are really, really old, and they've been there with 400 million years, so they've been exposed to the weathering. So they've been worn down by the weather year after year. Whereas the really, really young ones, like the Alps, they only started forming 35 million years ago. So they're still really, really high. And there's, there's a lot of weathering to attack them yet. So the youngest fold mountains that started forming formed 35 million years ago. And we call that time, that period 
of those fold mountains forming, we call it the alpine fold mountains. Okay, so any mountains, any fold mountains that started forming 35 million years ago, we call them the alpine fold mountains. Okay, so they include the Alps, obviously, in Europe. So the Alps, you're all familiar with. Some of you might have even gone skiing there. You, you'll surely have heard of them. So the Alps is a big fold mountain range which runs across numerous countries in Europe. Look at the map there. You've got France, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Italy, etc. Okay, so it's a massive mountain range that was once flat rock running across all those countries that was buckled upwards because of plates colliding. Um, you have the Andes, Fall Mountains in South, South America. They're young as well. They formed only 35 million years ago, so they're still pretty high. You have the Rockies in North America. They're only 35 million years old, still farming today. They're still young and they're still farming. And I'll tell you why they're still farming, because they're still on a plate boundary. And the Himalayas in Asia, we, like in the previous video, we looked at the earthquake in Nepal and how it triggered landslides and avalanches and things around the Himalayas. They're still an active plate boundary. So as long as the plates underneath those regions are still colliding and buckling the rock upwards, the fall mountains are going to keep growing and growing. Now, the second oldest fall mountains, so the ones that formed before the Alpine fall mountains, we call them the Armorican fall mountains. So any fall mountains that started forming 250 million years ago, we call them the Armorican fall mountains. So what, what do they include? Any mountains, fall mountains across Munster. So the Mickey Goddy Reeks back in Kerry, back in Clarny, I'm sure you visited there loads of times. Did you even realise there are fall mountains? Now, obviously, they've been there with 250 million years. They're not on an active plate boundary anymore. So they're not growing in size anymore. They have been exposed to the weather for 250 million years. So they have been worn down and smoothened. So that's why we don't see the ridges and the edges in them as much. And they have been reduced in height. The Galtys in Munster are another example of fall mountains. But they've been exposed to the weathering for so long. So they've been smoothened and worn down. And the oldest, oldest, oldest fall mountains that we have across the earth are the Caledonian fall mountains. So they're the ones that started forming first 400 million years ago. So they went across Ireland and they went across Scotland and Scandinavian countries. So the Dublin Wicklow Mountains, okay, again, some of you might have holiday there in the past. The Dublin Wicklow Mountains are the one of the oldest fall mountains we have across this earth. So they started forming 400 million years ago. Um, so if you look at that map there in Ireland, it shows you to the south of Ireland in the Munster region that the Armorican folding happened 250 million years ago and it affected the south of Ireland, the Munster region. Whereas the Caledonian, the really, really oldest fall mountain building that we had, happened 400 million years ago and it affected Leinster, the Wicklow, Dublin Wicklow Mountains formed them and across other regions of Ireland, the Bluestack Mountains and Newry and all those. Okay, so finally then, and that's a great diagram actually there for a diagram of fall mountains. So you, you can draw two continental plates colliding or you can draw an oceanic and a continental plate colliding, whatever is easier for you, but show that it has buckled the rock upwards as a result of the two plates colliding, okay? Um, how do fall mountains actually benefit a region to have them? Well, think of Killarney. I mean, the minute you drive back into Killarney, it's picturesque. It's what drives, draws the tourists back there to take pictures of the mountains. People love to go mountain climbing back there, um, take pictures of them, um, wedding photos. American tourists love it. People go hill walking, mountain climbing. It does draw tourism, so it creates jobs and money. So a tour guides to take you on a tour around the lakes, even underneath the mountains. A guide to take you mountain climbing. Um, if it's the Himalayas or the Alps, there's different base camps that you stop off at and that you stay at. There has to be people manning those base camps. So it does create jobs. Um, it creates farming too, because if you're living in that region, you will send out sheep and goats. They're really the best, really, to, to rough graze in those regions because it's pretty rocky. But you could make a living out of it. And hydroelectric power. So that's the electricity that you create using water power, the rush of water through a dam. Now, any of those big fall mountains like the Alps and the Himalayas, they're often topped with a lot of snow. And whenever the snow melts, that melting water rushes down the mountains into the rivers. And if you build a dam across the river... Well, then the water rushing through that dam has turbines in it. It spins the turbines and creates electricity. So that benefits any homes and villages and towns around it. 
um, tourism, it draws tourists for skiing in winter, hiking in summer. When there's no snow in the summer, you just draw on the tourists to hike the mountains. That creates a load of jobs. Um, the Alps, sure, for God's sake, is making mint, basically, through drawing tourists in in the winter months and hikers in the summer months. Social impacts then. Okay, socially it's great because, you know, you can create work out of it. But it's hard going to build anything in those regions because they're very, very high mountains. So, like, it's very hard to build roads. Look at that winding road, like, I wouldn't fancy driving it. It's very, very expensive to build roads um, along those mountain ranges. The soil is very, very thin because, like, soil will just tumble down a mountain through mass movement. Gravity will bring it down. So the soil isn't very deep, so you can't grow much. So farming is difficult and it's unprofitable. So really, you can only rough graze sheep and goats. And avalanches are obviously a big danger as well. It can cause loss of many lives. It can affect skiing. It can affect tourism. So I suppose fall mountains can have their benefits and their draw, 